Hello and welcome to Orange Source. Well, my name is Elvis, and as always, I'm your host. All right, so this is going to be quite a short one. There's not a lot to talk about this week, and also not a lot I read or watched. So let's move on to news topics. First of which is that apparently the first round of DC's round robin tournament of what books are going to be made into miniseries or graphic novels has concluded. And it's about as much as you expect. It'd be too long to kind of go through the rest, so it's going to be like the last update until. This is all over. But one thing I noticed is that there has been some kind of decrying about how Dale Q obviously lost against the Robins uh, pitch. And I want to say that, yes, that's a shame. Because Robins, a team Robin book, is something that would always probably have happened. Like, there's no way that wouldn't have happened at some point. And there's been a bunch of stories and miniseries and maxi series and event series that already kind of used the entire idea already. So it's, uh, it's kind of a shame. I just say that really probably had nothing to do with any kind of bias other than, well, the Robins are part of the Bat family and the Bat family is always going to be on top. It's always going to be the thing with the most public saturation. It's something very niche like JLQ probably wasn't going to fare as well anyway. Hopefully the next couple rounds are more interesting. And the only other thing I want to talk about this week is that apparently we have the first full trailer for the Jupiter's Legacy show. And it looks really fucking bad. I mean, I don't know how to put it. It just looks terrible. It looks generic. It looks so over the top and so self-serious at the same time. And it lacks all the charm, all the groundedness, and all the all the softer kind of nuanced natures of the comics. And it's a shame that this is something that, that Millar has really kind of attached his um, wagon to. Because it's something that, that really, really could have you know been handled with a lot more justice a lot more finesse and a lot more authenticity i'm so excited that at the very least this has motivated millar to do like the finale the final you know mass series of this trilogy but other than that it sounds like it's going to be really bad and the trailer doesn't do anything to dissuade that opinion anyway let's move on to what i read this week first off we have the immortal hulk number 45 and it is amazing it's great it's it's another issue that's still kind of more focused on being like an action-packed issue it's not something that really does a lot of kind of groundwork doesn't really slow things down it's still something that feels like it's going at a rapid pace but what it does and does so well is that it finally gives us like this perfect cap off to joe's whole arc about self-discovery about really coming to terms with identity and what he wants to be and how he sees himself as we see the return of Joe as the Hulk, and not just any Hulk, not just Joe Fix It, the Grey Hulk, but as the Incredible Hulk, he's come to reclaim that title, to reclaim that that mantle, and I think that's really wonderful because that's who he is. Before a Savage, before Bronze, before Professor Hulk, before Doc Hulk, you know the modern age Hulks, he was the Incredible Hulk, and I think that by having him sort of transform and just you know say it out loud and have the logo appear and everything. He really sells that because, you know, he is the original, and it's so great that he's coming in right at the fi- right at the start of the final arc. And you know what? I'm so glad for that. And it's a pitch perfect moment, and it's such a triumphant moment, especially because of all the all the tender um, and character work and character complexity that Ewing has been doing. It just gives it such a such empathetic and such an engaging impact. So two thumbs up. I really enjoyed it. There's some other stuff sprinkled throughout, like with Doc Samson and, and Doc Sack Squatch. That's really fun. Kind of seating the, the area for the Gamma Flight spinoff that's going on. But yeah, fingers crossed that it turns out, you know, to stick the landing. Four issues left. And uh, yeah, can't wait. Season's up. After that, we have a snoozer next men week. We have Excalibur and Marauders. And I have to say, both of those have really started to lose their luster with me. I'm Excalibur more than anything because it's a series that while I enjoyed it and defended it a lot in the past, I just don't understand what it's going for or what it's trying to do. And it feels so aimless and ridiculous and there's just no real hook or tether to it. Emotionally or introspectively or with character work, it feels all over the place and it always has. But now without any kind of grounding force like Apocalypse and just having a core around him or any other characters there's no real anchor you know uh so two thumbs down and with marauders it's just tedious i i 
don't think it's too bad yet, but it's tedious and monotonous. Two phones middle. Anyway, let's move on to uh, what I watched this week. We have the third episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and this is probably the worst episode yet. It's it's probably the one episode that feels the most insulting to the audience, to the viewer. I think that more than anything, the first two episodes, even though they had their flaws and even though they weren't really that entertaining, they did a great job at you know doing character work and doing some actual character beats and arcs and really trying to map out who Sam and Bucky are, which the previous movies hadn't done. Meanwhile, this episode... It still does that a little bit, but it's just kind of wastes time with, again, more really bad bunny humor, more really bad kind of banter. And also, since we're halfway done, we have to say we have to set the stakes and actually produce and and try to make our villains actual villains. They had them do just ridiculously like blunt, superficial and annoyingly, obviously evil stuff. And it feels as manipulative as it possibly can. Uh, it's almost on a level of like WandaVision. Where like it had its villain just do the most stupidest shit. Just because it, you have to have that audience hate him. And same thing happens here. It feels just out of place and forced and rushed. And of course it would be. Because we only have three episodes left. This is a six episode series. Um, so yeah. It doesn't really give me much hope for where the series is going. And honestly. With three episodes left. I don't know what it could do to be interesting again. Uh, it's it's really trying to to kind of hold the hand of the audience in the worst ways possible. Anyway, that's it for this week, and hopefully next week will be a little bit more exciting. I just want to say thank you to anyone out there who's still listening. It means so much to me, and it really means a lot. And I want to give a shout out to the Kavarish for the show at D-O-T-E-M-C-E. Please them out. They're amazing, and have a great weekend. See you again next time, and have a good one.